Hey everybody, Stephen Bogran here from Pro Physique. Today I want to talk about why you should stop dieting. Hey everybody, hope you're all having a wonderful day so far. I wanted to spend a day and spend some time, I don't even have a watch, talking about some reasons why maybe we should consider not going into a fat loss calorie deficit. And let's be honest, this one is really, really more so talking to those of you who have been chronic dieters throughout your history and those of you who have been aggressive dieters throughout your history. So for a lot of us who compete, we may or may not fall into that category. And so I think that's probably the easiest way to explain it is to start off by talking about competitors. Competitors, if you truly want to get better, truly want to get better in this thing that we call bodybuilding and improvement, there is a high likelihood you are going to need to take time away from the competitive aspect of the sport in terms of stepping on stage or really not stepping on stage for a while. Now, this has been something that in natural bodybuilding people have known very well and they have done for a quite a while. A lot of really successful natural bodybuilders take nice long off seasons, long times away from dieting. And that could have something to do with the fact that their preps tend to be longer, 20 weeks, 24 weeks. I think 36 week preps uh, for natural bodybuilders. And so, you know, that might have a little bit more to do with it just because you kind of burnt the hell out on that sometimes as well after a long dieting phase. Um, I've dieted for six months before. It's not a blasty blast. Um, <laughs> so that might be part of it, but I have currently been in an off season for two and a half years. Right now, to this day, about two and a half years. So, again, it can be super beneficial for allowing your body to just sort of be normal and to be healthy. Um, as well as if you want to build muscle or for some of us, we need to build muscle. We need to be in a good spot to be healthy to do it. We want our body working well. We want it working to where our hormones are in good, healthy, normal ranges and levels um, and to where we're going to be able to recover from our training. And so we want our bodies to also adapt away from those lower calorie intakes. So just like anything else, when our body receives a stimulus, it will adapt to that stimulus. For those of you who have competed back to back years, you may know this quite well. The first year, your body responded really, really well. It was like, hey, we make a calorie cut, boom, weight's dropping, oh yeah. But the next year, it was a little bit tougher. You had to be a little bit more aggressive. You had to work a little bit harder. And the year after that, again, we had to be a little bit more aggressive. We had to go even harder. Uh, the body didn't respond as well. We weren't able to get quite as lean, maybe. And so what we can see is the body is adapting to that. It says, man, we, like, that's not a good place to be physiologically speaking, right? Our body wants to have some semblance of body fat. And homeostasis is a range, so there's definitely a healthy range of body fat, right? Uh, but stage lean is not it. Let's be real here. <laughs> Um, so if we're continually trying to push towards that, we're eating very low calorie, we're training very hard, we're doing a lot of cardiovascular activity, right? Those are all things that are putting a lot of stress on the body. So we see stress levels high, cortisol's through the roof, we don't recover well, we don't sleep well, uh, mood state's gone, all those things add up. And so we have to give the body time away from those things. We have to give it time at a higher calorie intake and a lower cardiovascular activity um, and allow it to actually be able to manage everything. Um, it's kind of like when paperwork is just building up and building up, building up. Well, we need some time to actually get through all that paperwork so that we can actually just be on par, right? I don't really do a lot of paperwork, but that was the analogy I came up with. So for competitors, if you've done a prep and you've done a hard prep and you, you've busted your ass, it makes sense to take time away from the dieting phase. 
Normally what I tell somebody, if you want to do multiple shows in a year, they should be grouped reasonably close together because it can be very hard to manage that. And with 2020, there were definitely some individuals where we had to manage that and do our best. However, I have never been one to say, hey, let's automatically plan for doing shows six months apart and doing this and that. If we do, we have to be very smart about it. We have to be aware of what we're doing. We have to keep body fat in a reasonable place. We have to reverse. We have to do some other things. So if you say go off the rails a little bit or maybe go on a vacation and do some other things, we put on a little bit more body fat than we need to, we probably should not be looking at trying to force another prep later on in the year to try and go at it again. It would probably be a wiser decision to say, hey, this is where my body fat's at right now. We're gonna keep it here. I'm gonna make sure I'm doing all the right things to be healthy, give myself some time so that I can respond later on down the road and take some time away from diet. Now, I've talked a lot about competitors here, but this still goes for those of you who are non-competitors and are just dieting. Because if you're a competitor that works with me, you know that there's a bare bones bottom end to how low I will take your calories. That's not always the case with other people, and that's not always the case with other dieting strategies. I've seen plenty of people on 700 calories, 800 calories diets. That is much more aggressive than I am willing to go with an individual, okay? But again, your body adapts to these things. And you can think of it like this, if you are swimming, when you start learning how to swim, you're all over the place, you're burning a ton of calories, you're not very good at it, you're super inefficient. As you get better at swimming, well guess what? Your strokes get a little bit better, you're splashing a little bit less, your breathing gets better, all of those things improve. So you actually are gonna end up burning less calories through that. Well, your body's going to do that with just about everything. It does it with how you run, jog, bike, all that stuff. It gets better at those things to become more efficient. It's great for survival. Not necessarily as great for something like maintaining body composition, okay? So we want to be aware of those things as well. And for those of us who have dieted really hard for a very long amount of time, who have had extremely high calorie or high cardio outputs, excuse me, we may need to stop, possibly collaborate, and maybe listen a little bit. Because if we continue doing the same things over and over, it's hard to be able to realistically expect different results. And if the same thing has gotten us into a really bad place because we've been doing the same thing over and over and over, well, we might need to consider doing something differently. And for those of us who are maintaining our weight on a very low calorie intake and a high calorie expenditure, we probably need to pay attention to bringing the calorie expenditure down, bringing the calorie intake up over time, trying to maintain that body weight and actually set you up to be in a position for success. It's like when you go into a new job and they say, cool, no training, you're on it. Get on the floor, time to go. Yeah, it's gonna be a lot tougher to try and make things work and we're probably gonna have a lot of problems there. Whereas if we really set ourselves up, we do the training, we make sure that we, you know, the job is understood, guess what, we're going to be much, much, much better prepared to be successful in our endeavors. And so for some of us, this is actually going to mean doing the very thing that we are afraid of or uncomfortable with, which is staying where we're at in terms of body composition, possibly even gaining weight and taking time to set ourselves up. Because I know there's a million get rich quick schemes in terms of fat loss and weight loss out there. <sighs> However, we don't want to get stuck on just the short term. We want to look down the road. We want to see how to make you successful for the rest of your life not only for the next two weeks. And so that can very often require that we take a different stance on a subject than maybe what we have prior. So remember guys, it's not necessarily that dieting is bad because it's not. And a lot of people probably need to diet. We want to be at a healthy weight. We want to have all of the good blood markers for our physiological health. We want to feel good, have energy, all of those other kinds of wonderful things. So there's not inherently anything wrong with dieting. For some of us, it might even be necessary. However, 
if we get into a consistent dieting phase over and over and over, it can very much so put us in a bad spot for the long term. So we want to be careful about how often we're getting into a diet. We want to be careful about how we're coming out of a diet and maintaining body composition so that we're setting ourselves up to be happy um, with how we look and how we feel. And we wanna just be aware of how often we're dieting and what we may or may not need to do to take time away from that dependent on our individual situations. So that's it, that's all I got. I'm gonna go away now.